Hello everybody, I am Keaton of Kinetic Catholic Ministries, back with another video. I hope that you all are having an absolutely wonderful Tuesday so far for Season 14, Episode 4. And guys, I'm ready for today's video. Today, we have a big question to answer. Did Jesus have siblings? I, I want to clarify before we dive into it that just by nature of what we are talking about, this um, may not be a video that is for younger audiences, and, and therefore just keep that in mind if you typically watch it as a family um, or, or whatever the case may be. So let's dive into this, right? Uh, did Jesus have siblings? Well, obviously, we got to look at the Bible. The Bible is a great source for this type of stuff. And what's weird is scripture actually says um, right here in Matthew 13, 53 through 56. And when Jesus had finished these parables, he went away from there and coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? Are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? Well, that's a little confusing because we know that the Catholic Church teaches that he doesn't have siblings. But we're reading right there in Scripture about his brethren and his sisters. Let's dive exactly into the Catholic Church's teaching. Um, right here in the CCC 500, we read, Against this doctrine, the objection is something raised that the Bible mentions brothers and sisters of Jesus. The church has always understood these passages as not referring to other children of the Virgin Mary. In fact, James and Joseph, brothers of Jesus, are the sons of another Mary, a disciple of Christ, whom St. Matthew significantly calls the other Mary. They are close relations of Jesus, according to an Old Testament expression. Okay. Cool. So the Catholic Church provides an explanation, says, okay, no, like we know that it mentions that he has brothers and sisters, but they're really uh, related to him in a different sense. Now, let's ask this question. Is the Catholic Church just doing that because they want to cover up their own teaching? They've always taught about the virginity of Mary, right? They've always taught about, about how Jesus doesn't have siblings. Maybe that's why. Or maybe there's actual reasoning behind it. A lot in this video, we're going to be diving in a lot to scripture. Like there are so many passages to read today, guys, because there's a lot of evidence to look into. Okay, did he really have siblings or not? Because this verse in Matthew is telling me one thing and the catechism is telling me another thing. So it's important to note the word for brethren and the word for sisters that are used. Again, guys, we forget that the Bible wasn't written in English, right? So we are getting translations that sometimes can be pretty rough. And so um, Adelphi is is the sister. Adelphos is, was the word for brother. And then Adelphoi was the word um, uh, for sibling. That we see translated here. But really, those three Greek words didn't just mean brother, sister, or sibling. It meant any really form of, of relation with another person. My cousin who's a guy would be my Adelphos. My my uncle, my nephew, wh whatever, would be Adelphos. My niece would be uh, Adelphi, right? Like that was the word that was used for a relation of any kind, not specifically brother and sister. So that's important to note here in Matthew is that it's not explicitly brother and sister. It is people who are related to Christ. Okay, well, that's one thing. Okay, it's, it's a different word. But how do we know that? How do we know that, that we're not really just being told that so that we don't think that, that um, they're brothers and sisters? Well, let's look at another place in Scripture um, in which it is made clear that, that this word, uh, Adelphi, um, uh, Adelphoi rather, is not really just brother and sister. So if, if we go right here all the way to the start, right, of the Bible in Genesis 1414. It says, when Abram heard that his kinsmen had been taken captive, he led from forth his trained men, born in his house, 318 of them, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. So kinsmen, the word there, is the same word, Adelphoi, um, that we see pop up later in Matthew. It's just translated differently because we know that, that this is um, referring to Lot, Abram's Adelphos, who was really um, Abram's nephew. And so we see Lot and Abram have a nephew-uncle connection, and the same word is being used, even though it's translated differently. The same word is being used that was used in Matthew to describe the uh, so-called siblings of Jesus that we saw. 
But maybe that's not evidence enough. Maybe it still could have been talking about his siblings, even though the word was a broader word. Oh, okay, well, let's look. Let, let's let's go back. Again, I'm going to be picking this up a lot today, guys. It is so, so important that we are looking at Scripture. Let's look in Luke. Again, so many bookmarks for today, right? Let's look in Luke chapter 1. Um, because, again, if, if we're questioning whether Jesus had siblings, we're questioning the virginity of Mary. I mean, I mean we are. And so, as we see right here in Luke 1, 34, And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no husband? Uh, this is in regards to the Annunciation, when the angel Gabriel comes and then tells Mary that she is to bear a son. He is to be named Jesus. He is to be made Savior of the world. She says very clearly, how, how can this be since I have no husband? It'd be because she was a virgin. The Holy Spirit um, is, is what allowed for her to become pregnant with the Savior of the world. Uh, let, let's look some more, okay? And In John 19, we have something interesting happen in which um, Jesus, in two ways, gives Mary to John at the foot of the cross. He 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 gives her to he gives her to him in one sense of like Mary becoming the rest of our mother, right? As John, as a representative for the rest of the body of Christ. But then also in a more literal sense, it's, it's in two ways. It doesn't have to be an either or of allowing John to take care of Mary for the rest of her life. Here he says. Um, it's John 19, 26 through 27. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. So John took her back to his own home, right? To take care of her for, for, for the rest of her life. If Jesus had other siblings, why wouldn't the siblings take care of her, right? If Mary really had more kids than just Jesus, that doesn't make any sense. Clearly, she didn't. But, okay, well, let's go back. Maybe these siblings, what about the siblings, right? The siblings are named. The siblings are named, right? Who are they? Who are these mysterious names that we see pop up in Scripture? Well, the Catechism of the Catholic Church addresses who they are. What's the evidence for that? Well, let's look right here. Again, guys, it's going to be a Scripture-heavy day, but that is necessary. Right here in Matthew... Uh, 2755. There were also many women there looking on from afar who had followed. No, excuse me. We're, we're going to reverse the order. Matthew 27, 59 through 61. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. That's interesting. We see the women discover Jesus' empty tomb, and there's the other Mary referred to in Matthew's gospel. Well, for this to be the other Mary, we had to have been introduced to her before, right? We had to have been introduced to this other Mary before, except that we were just a couple of verses earlier. When in Matthew 27, uh, 55, 56, this is the one I was, I was initially reading, there were also many women there looking on from afar who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. This isn't referring to the ever-Virgin Mary. This is referring to Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, who we, we see later on is the other Mary. Do you think that Matthew would have referred to um, the Mary, the mother of Jesus, as the other Mary? No, she's had a much larger part in the narrative. We've known her a lot throughout the Gospels, right? He, she would, he would have just said Mary. But he says, no, the other Mary. As in the one mentioned a couple of verses prior, as in the mother of James and Joseph. James and Joseph we were introduced to in Matthew 13, 53, 57, as the brethren of Jesus. But really, the Adelphoi of Jesus. People related to him in some way like it just keeps adding on evidence that there is another mary mary was a very popular name at that time so what about this mysterious mary do, do we know more about her well let's go into john shall we there is john 19 verse 25 we read so the soldiers did this but standing by the cross of jesus were his mother 
and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas. Were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas. It's important to note when talking about Mary's sister here, that word Adelphi is used again. So that doesn't necessarily mean that, that it's the sister of Mary. It means that it's someone related to Mary, another Mary who's related to Mary, right? And it's more likely that it's a different relation than sister because they share a name. So it's Mary, the wife of Clopas, and we are introduced to this new man, Clopas. This Mary is described as the same one, right? Who can easily be correlated because it's the only other Mary other than Mary Magdalene and the Mary mother of Jesus mentioned throughout the entire gospel can easily be correlated with the Mary from Matthew, who was the mother of James and Joseph, who was the other Mary. So we're seeing here right in scripture that James and Joseph, these brothers of Jesus were really children to this different Mary and Clopas, that Mary being related to the Virgin Mary in some way, and therefore James and Joseph were related to Jesus, but they were not his siblings. It, it, it's so interesting to see that. But but let's go outside of scripture, okay? Maybe the church fathers were confused about this. Maybe the church fathers really didn't know what was going on. Um, There's a non-canonical, that's important to note, but it is a highly respected work. It's from around 150 AD. It's called the Proto-Evangelium of James, where he speaks of Mary, the Blessed Virgin, as a consecrated virgin from her youth, and that Joseph would have had a job to protect that virginity, that that was necessary for him to protect. And again, backing up the virginity of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, there is um, a genius New Testament th um, scholar named Dr. Brant Petre, and he actually makes some good points about how uh, Jesus could not have had other siblings. And he looks at, at this a man named Eusebius. Eusebius was an early church father who has a book, um, which was a history of the early church. And he mentions um, three more segments in which Eusebius all identifies the brother of Jesus as different people. It's um, book four, paragraph 22, or I guess it's two, book four, paragraph 22, and book three, paragraphs 11 through 12, all identify the brothers of Jesus as, di as these different people um, who had different relations to him in different ways, but none of whom were his brother. Eusebius didn't write that as a defense of, of Jesus um, not having other brothers. He just knew that he didn't. He, he knew that at the time that he was writing it, which was the early 4th century AD, that it was widely accepted and known that Jesus did not have any other brothers. This kind of, oh, Jesus had siblings thing is more of a new ordeal that is sparked largely from translations of the Bible tr uh, with poor translations of that word Adelphoi. Um, and it, it's just wild to see there's so many evidence that shows through scripture and outside of scripture, that the early church fathers knew Jesus didn't have any siblings. Scripture knows Jesus didn't have any siblings. And so maybe, just maybe, the Catholic church doesn't just make stuff up. And maybe when the Catholic church says something in the catechism, it actually has evidence to back it up. And so when you hear a lot of these Protestants or other Christian denominations say, oh yes, well, Jesus had brothers, it says it in scripture, yeah, if you just pick up a, a version of the Bible and read it, then that's what you're going to think. I don't necessarily blame them, but you got to look deeper into it because scripture is full of so much truth, but you also have to understand it wasn't written in English. It was written in Greek and ancient Greek at that. And because of that, it has been uh, uh, translated and there are some words that are different that, that can shape or twist the meaning of things, which is why it's kind of dangerous when we go in and say, yes, everybody should interpret the Bible for themselves because no, not necessarily. There were certain things meant by the Bible that translations and things, it, it just messes it up, which is why um, we have, well, not the only reason why, but one of the reasons why we have the Catholic Church, which is an interpreter of scripture based on the tradition of the early church fathers who knew, definitely knew more than we did, right? I mean, the early church fathers were very recently after Jesus's life. So it only makes logical sense that they're going to know more details than we do over 2000 years later. And so it's important to take those details through apostolic succession, understand them, acknowledge them, which is exactly what the catechism of the Catholic church does. Proving that Jesus Christ did not have siblings. He had cousins of, of some kind, uh, a fairly distant relation, 
um, to Jesus, but nevertheless, not his brothers and sisters, rather his Adelphoi, because Mary is still the Blessed Virgin, despite a lot of modern day beliefs. So now that the topic is done, do y'all know what it is time for now? It's time for the Saint of the Week. And today's Saint of the Week is Saint Ignatius of Loyola, who's a 15th to 16th century saint. Now, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, very well known as the founder of the Jesuits. Um, he actually was on his way to military fame when a cannonball shot him in the leg, um, shattered his leg. And because he was injured, there were no romance books around to read, so he was forced to read something on the life of Christ and the lives of the saints. And this deeply touched him in a way that, that really nothing else had. Um, and he, he was deeply touched, and it was a long and painful kind of conversion um, to Christianity that took place. And it was actually during this conversion that he started jotting down some some spiritual uh, ideas, right? Some some concepts, and, and which later became his greatest works, the spiritual exercises. Um, it, it was during this year of conversion, again, adding on. To it, um, he ended up dedicating himself to Christ. He founded something that was at the time called the Society um, of Jesus, in which him um, and and some other men, along with Saint Francis Xavier being one of them, vowed to dedicate themselves to a life of of poverty, a life of prayer, a life of fasting, and it ended up being approved by Pope Paul. The third. He had visited the Holy Land, but was forced to leave because of the hostility of the Turks. Um, but loved the Holy Land, loved getting to go to um to, to shrines and see where the stuff actually happened. Um, Ignatius uh, was sure to, despite being arrested multiple times for false beliefs, he was sure to stand strong um, in his ground in in furthering Catholicism and and in spreading it to a greater variety um, uh, of people. For him, the prominent virtue was obedience and, and obedience um, to the Pope wholeheartedly. And so that is kind of what the Jesuits um, were then built upon. Uh, and, and it began to grow. He ended up dying in 1556 and was canonized in the 17th century. Um, when we're talking about kind of the teachings of the Catholic Church, and the, the accuracy of those teachings. And then you have someone like, who, like St. Ignatius of Loyola, who converted, right, who acknowledged the accuracy of the Catholic Church, and as a result, um, was dedicated to the magisterium, and, and, and more specifically, the Pope. That's a really great thing, right? Like, that's a cool thing to see. And so when we feel like we're maybe struggling with, with, the, with the teaching of the church, or we don't really get it, St. Ignatius of Loyola, if we pray through him, if we ask him to pray for us, can help us to see that there is a why behind everything the church teaches. And it's not just the church. It's not just old men deciding this randomly. It's Christ. And that the church actually has evidence for what they believe. And today just being one example of the fact that Jesus did not have siblings. So, St. Ignatius of Loyola pray for us. Before you guys click off this video, I'm not just a YouTuber, I'm also a Catholic speaker, so if you want to book me to come and speak to your church school, men's group, women's group, youth conference, you name it, please email us directly at kineticcatholicministries at gmail.com or go to the website kineticcatholic.com, click the contact us page and reach out to us from there, and I would be happy to come and speak. That was unfortunate. Anyway, um, I would be happy to come and speak. Uh, there's also so many awesome things you can do on the website. Um, you can contact me. Uh, you can you can read about me. All of our all of my videos are up there. You can see the um, advisory board that, that we have for this ministry, and there's also your very own Kinetic Catholic shop up there. Please check out all three of our social medias: Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The link to all three of those will be in the description down below. Please comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have for future videos. Please like the video. Please click the red subscribe button down below and the bell next to it. That way you get notified when I come out with a new video. And if you are already subscribed, then please share this channel and video with your friends and family. Make sure that they know about Kinetic Catholic Ministries. I want to say thank you guys um, so much once again for watching. I hope that you are having a lovely Tuesday so far. A lovely um, first day, well, not first day of February, last day of January, a lovely end to your January as, as February is coming up. This was Keaton of Kinetic Catholic Ministries. I will see you all next week and hi, Brielle.